The Creature from the Black Lagoon is one of my favourite films. I have a poster of it on the wall of my study. I own it on DVD and have recently ordered the Blu-ray off eBay. And I even have this Mego action figure still in its box, a collector's item. This creature from the Black Lagoon debuted in 1954, instantly becoming a legend of horror cinema. Known as the Gill Man, this amphibious predator is a monstrous hybrid of fish and man. But what if we considered it not as a monster, but as an animal? Let's examine its anatomy, physiology and adaptations, and see how such a creature might fit into the natural world. Upon first glance, the creature's body resembles that of an upright, humanoid amphibian. Its scaly, armour-like skin could be a defence against predators and environmental hazards alike. Scales help aquatic creatures reduce friction in water, but in the creature, these also seem adapted to protect it on land, possibly from the rugged forest floor and predators. It's a versatile trait for surviving in both terrestrial and aquatic habitats. The most distinctive feature is its dual respiratory system. Equipped with gills on its neck, the creature likely has a way to draw oxygen from water, similar to modern amphibians that breathe through their skin and lungs. This adaptation suggests that it can absorb oxygen both from the water and, when out on land, through its lungs, allowing it to function in both environments seamlessly. Interestingly, some animals, like certain salamanders and lungfish, have similar abilities, using a combination of gills and lungs depending on their surroundings. The creature could be a highly advanced version of such species, combining features from both amphibians and fish, granting it the remarkable ability to transition between water and land with ease. The creature's adaptations make it perfectly suited for its Amazonian habitat, a dense, dark and rich environment where survival requires specialised traits. Its webbed hands and feet are a prime example, likely giving it exceptional swimming speed and manoeuvrability. This would allow it to stay close to the riverbed, moving silently, perhaps even using the muddy substrate to remain concealed. The creature's streamlined limbs and torso indicate it has evolved for agility in water, allowing it to ambush prey effectively. The Amazon is a highly competitive ecosystem, home to jaguars, crocodiles and carnivorous fish such as bull sharks and piranhas, so these adaptations are essential for both hunting and evading predators. Beyond this, the creature's camouflaged skin could help it blend with the murky water and the shadowy forest floor, providing a natural advantage for stalking prey undetected. This type of camouflage is often found in apex predators, and in the creature's case, it would allow it to thrive as both hunter and survivor in its environment. To stalk and hunt effectively, the gill man would require finely tuned sensory systems, its prominent, forward-facing eyes suggest binocular vision, a common trait in predators for depth perception. Such vision would allow it to detect movement and judge distances accurately, making it a lethal hunter, both underwater and on land. Furthermore, its eyes are specially adapted for low-light environments, hinting at nocturnal or crepuscular hunting habits. This makes sense, given the dimly lit Amazon, where dense vegetation blocks sunlight and waters are often clouded with sediment. Like crocodilians or big cats, the creature's eyes may have a reflective layer, known as a tapetum lucidum, allowing it to see well in darkness. Beyond vision, we might speculate that the creature has an advanced sense of smell, or even a lateral line system, similar to fish, that detects vibrations in water. The lateral line, a network of sensory cells along the body, could allow the creature to sense the slightest movement around it, alerting it to potential prey or danger, even without visual contact. Combined, these features would make it an effective and stealthy hunter, able to detect, stalk and ambush its prey. One of the most intriguing mysteries is how a creature like this would reproduce. Given its amphibious traits, it's possible the creature follows a life cycle akin to amphibians, beginning in water as a tadpole-like larva, before transforming into its mature form. 
such a life cycle would mean the creature might go through multiple metamorphic stages, with each stage providing specific adaptations for different environments. This is similar to the life cycle of amphibians, which are tied to water in their early stages, but become semi-terrestrial as adults, things like frogs and toads. Alternatively, the creature may be fully developed at birth, like certain fish that bear live young. This type of reproductive strategy would mean that newborn creatures are immediately capable of surviving on both land and in water, allowing them to avoid early stage predators and compete for resources right from the start. But where could a creature like this come from? Evolutionarily, it seems like a mix of amphibian, reptilian and has even got fish traits, making it a possible living fossil or remnant of a forgotten lineage. One theory might be that it represents an evolutionary offshoot, an ancient branch of vertebrates adapted specifically to thrive in tropical waterlogged environments. It could be that the creature evolved millions of years ago, when amphibians and fish were experimenting with land-based adaptations, developing its distinct dual breathing system as a way to maximise survival in shallow oxygen-poor waters. If isolated long enough, it's conceivable that it continued evolving in a unique direction, eventually becoming what we see today, a creature with a rare blend of aquatic and terrestrial traits. Another possibility is that it represents convergent evolution, where similar environmental pressures lead to similar adaptations in different species. This could explain how it shares traits with fish, reptiles and amphibians, each group adapted for survival in wetland environments, but converging toward similar forms for ambush hunting, water breathing and survival on land. Anyway, the creature from the Black Lagoon may be fiction, but the biological principles it represents are real. Its adaptations remind us of the vast and often bizarre diversity of life on Earth, and the ways evolution can shape organisms to survive in even the most extreme habitats. If the Earth's unexplored depths can give rise to such a creature, then what other wonders might be hidden in uncharted waters waiting to be discovered? Interesting stuff. If you enjoyed this exploration, please remember to like this video and hit the subscribe button, it's very much appreciated, and it helps with getting the channel noticed and recognised by the algorithm. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can become a patron of mine by following the link in the description, and also you can do the same, but if you would rather be a channel member here on YouTube, that link is available in the description as well. This has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.